Did you know there have been over 200 Did You Know Facts ever since this podcast began, including this one? You're listening to the Xbox Hub podcast, the official podcast of the xboxhub.com. For the latest Xbox news, reviews, videos, and opinions, make sure you visit the xboxhub.com. But for now, settle down, get comfy, and open your ears for some podcast delights. Hello, welcome to the Xbox Hub official podcast episode 200. My name's Gareth Brighton, I'm going to be your host on my virtual left is Mr. Darren Edwards. How are you doing, Darren? Hi, good evening. I can't believe we've made it to 200. The positivity is just oozing out of the podcast this evening. I'm loving it. It is. We had a bad start. I'm very angry. <laughs> I'd rather be somewhere else. It's 23 degrees here in London. I want to be outside having a drink. Um, uh, well, happy 200. And on my virtual right is Mr. Paul Renshaw. How are you doing, Paul? Uh, good afternoon, Gareth. A happy 200s to you. Um, I was going to say there's something oozing out of this podcast, and it's certainly not professionalism. <laughs> um, and speaking of professionalism, on my opposite side is Mr. Richard Dobson. How are you doing, Richard? Uh, hello. I'm not sure where you've read that connection, but I'll take it nonetheless. <laughs> Thank you. I'd like to know how many each person's done of these podcasts, all these 200. Maybe that feels like a out. job for Neil with his stats, yeah. doesn't it? I think my first mm. one was episode six. Wow. I think yeah. mine was mine was in the high sort of tens. I think I've got a feeling it was around eighty or so. Yeah, that feels that rings that rings about. Yeah, similar yeah. to me, I think. Yeah. Wow, two hundred, there you go. Um you can listen to them all if you if you if you're if you're, if you're broken. <laughs> you're having, a, having a nervous <laughs> breakdown. Um <laughs> You can have a listen to them all, um, all 200 of them. But it's it's going to be a fun one today because, well, it's going to be fun and quite depressing because we're going to talk about games, we're going to talk about what we're doing, but also we're going to talk about the big story this week, which is about Xbox. But we have got Dobbo's Confessional. It's back to finish us off. Hey. Hey. Um, but let's, hey. Start, let's start by our weeks. Hey. Oh, that's a bit delayed. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I felt left out. There. He's not as excited as we are. You know, and he's set up. <laughs> uh, doesn't bode well. Um, let's start by our weeks. How's our weeks been? What have we been doing, Darren? Uh, so I, I've had a good week because we've finally booked our wedding day, um, which is very exciting. So for those who don't know i've been engaged for over five and a half years and not by design we've been engaged that long we just haven't really had any sort of impetus to sort it out really we've been quite happy but we've decided that now's the time and we've booked a date for next year so happy days um just an excuse to have a big party really i think and we have also been watching shogun so we, we talked about this a few weeks ago we've only just finished it this week uh, it's on Disney Plus and it's really really good they're talking about making a second series but it's a it's a bit Game of Thronesy. it's all about power struggles and feudal Japan um, and a, a westerner washes up on the shores of Japan and uh, it just kind of goes from there but I, I, I th- have you watched it Gareth because it's I really good I haven't seen it yet no, no I want to see it what well, oh, I thought then real. Darren the way you link the two things together I thought and we're going to have a Shogun themed wedding because you, oh, you, instantly, that would be good. you instantly linked the two things. It was like an amazing. I thought, and, we, and we've been watching Shogun, so you know, we're going to Japan. <laughs> I, I could see you uh, marching yeah. down the aisle with your katana. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I mean, I, I wouldn't rule it out. All options are on the table currently. So. <laughs> Fantastic. Maybe Paul could be your A wedding planner. Wedding. Uh, absolutely yeah i mean oh. we're, go- we're going to put ryan in a kimono we're going to put darren in full samurai armor i think i think this stuff writes itself um, it really does i think we've just missed one of the best jokes ever richard can you say that again please i was going to say a shogun wedding's better than a shotgun wedding yeah, that's that's very good. Oh, very, very good. good. I, we need a, we need a dumptish. That's why <laughs> we're comes up. It's <laughs> always better when you have to explain the joke again another time. <laughs> <laughs> really hits the mark the second time, doesn't it? <laughs> but also, you had his shotgun. You explained it. It's better when you just came in. It's very good. <laughs> um, <laughs> the secret to comedy is timing. <laughs> there you go, kids. You heard it here first. There you go. Paul, Absolutely. What anyway, you, sorry, mate. I'm really excited about what you've been doing from the list I've got in front of me. Tell me about it. <laughs> um, well, 
I've been to Leeds. Mm-hmm. Well, Wakefield, as Dobbo would say, um, even even though it is Leeds, it's got a Leeds phone number, so it's a Leeds place. Um, yeah, I got a phone call saying um, none of our Wi-Fi is working. Oh, so obviously we did the old, have you tried turning it off and on again? And they did, and it still didn't work. So I had to go there and be a Wi-Fi engineer for the day. So that was fun. Um, and then we went, and I think, you I don't know if you remember, at the end of the last podcast, it was going to be that we're going to go and look for some fish. So we went looking for fish to put in the tanks. Oh, yes. Um, Sorry, yes. And... Um, <laughs> Yes, we found some fish. I bought some lovely whiptail catfish. They're quite cool. Um, but we've got to the point now where we think we're perhaps going to the fish shops too much because as we walked into one of the local garden centres, the manager of the fish place was just outside and he said to me, you want to come back on the 15th because we're getting a, a nice big collection of um, plex coming in from Brazil on the 15th so come back at the weekend after the 15th and we'll sort you out and i just thought i've not even walked into the garden center yet i'm still in the car park and i'm being accosted to told to come back because this guy knows what i'm into so yeah i thought that was uh it's good when you've got your local fish shop support them yeah are you, are you going back on monday uh not monday no i'm going to essex on monday Oh. Um, I've apparently the boss has been buying another company, um, so now I have to go down there and see what I can see with all the IT gear on Monday in Essex. It's about ten mile from Southend on Sea, so I might even treat myself to a walk on the beach. Good, there you go. Just remind everyone that's a gaming podcast. I always like to remind people after pause. <laughs> yeah. um, well, uh, listen. Gaming is everybody does gaming. Yeah, you don't get this kind of content anywhere else. <laughs> you and you, and you missed out pat testing this week as well, which is like amazing. I haven't done any. So luckily, <gasps> wow. it's I've been all right. I've managed to avoid that this week. Any listeners well, out there want some pat testing done? Paul's your man. Just give us a just email. let me know a very reasonable rates. Paul at the <laughs> Xbox Hub dot com. Um, right, <laughs> Richard, what have you been doing? Uh, I was going to talk about how I went to see Tenacious D on Wednesday and was at the darts last night, but then something happened today, which I feel like trumped it all. I uh, I very nearly ended up in A&E this morning. Oh, no. um, unfortunately, I had to go do a blood test and the room I was in for the blood test was about, it was a ridiculous temperature. Um, I'm not necessarily the best with needles and uh, the first first time she went to get some blood nothing came out the second time only a little trickle came out and then that that was me feeling feeling worse for wear basically um felt really ill really faint um had to lay down on this pull out of the chair so i was laid down um and then at one point there was six people in this room and they were all like or uh we uh we might have to get you. They did rung an ambulance at this point. They said it was going to be an hour. They was trying to get me on to uh, a drip and everything. And I thought this is very embarrassing because they had to have the door open as well because it was that warm. So there's just a waiting, uh, an ever increasing waiting room of people waiting to have blood tests. And there's me taking up a an entire room because I felt a bit faint because it was warm and I saw a needle. <laughs> wow. <laughs> are, you, are you all right, Richard? <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. As soon as they took me out of that room to get me into another room, uh, everything I, I just came back round. But, but yeah, at one point I was I was told I was going to A and E. Oh my word! No, I felt no. very embarrassed no. afterwards. No, oh, no, that happens all the time, doesn't it? it? Happens all the time. They're used to it. They're great. I was in hospital this week. I was in hospital as well on Wednesday, and I went in for a routine thing. And they went, "We're going to do everything to you. We're going to give you bloods. We're going to do ultrasounds. We're going to do da da da. We're going to do this." Do that, and I, I was I was only at half an hour. I thought I'm going to go back to work then, but I was there for four <laughs> hours. There you go. But now, Just they, what happens when you get old, though? You get your MOT, do. don't you? They do, and uh, they is, send, that what, is that what they were doing? They were doing everything they wanted to do, and I've got to go in for a op in June. Um, nothing major, and um, but I they send you a thing called my chart now. Maybe they just do this in London. I don't know. Have you heard of this my chart? 
So nope. they, you sign up to my chart, the idea behind it is good, and then they basically just sort out all your appointments. It's like having Discord. <laughs> and they have all your appointments. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I then, hope nobody hacked it. And then, and then they send you the sort of results of your blood test, but in detail, like everything like a doctor would see. So it's the worst thing ever because people would just be going, okay, I need to look up this. What does this bit mean? What does it, yeah. And it's just like in full detail. And my doctor friend said it's a nightmare. Because he gets people coming up with their charts into the surgery, going, "Could you just go through all these bits, please?" And it's like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so me and Richard, hospital, hospital brothers this week. Yeah, and there's our health updates for yeah. a change. Yeah, we don't. Well, do there, you yeah, there you go. How much of your um, how much of your funny turn was down to the amount of beer you drank at the darts then, Doc? I did at one point think that they were slightly related. <laughs> yeah, after you'd been poured into bed. Been poured into bed. Oh, there it went, is. Went there, a li- went there a little bit dehydrated. Um, uh, good. Yeah. Right. We're all better now. We're going to talk about games first of all. Just one inch today because we've got a lot to get through. Um, Darren, you start with your um, fun game. Darren. Sorry, my game. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I um, God, it's, you can tell it's going well when even the participants are bored. <laughs> yes. the heat. Someone call me an ambulance. Um, so my, <laughs> my first game is Little Kitty Big City, which I'm very pleased with because Neil basically said, do you want this? It has the cat in. I said, of course I do. Um, <laughs> And it's dropped onto Game Pass today as well. So it will be on when you listen to this podcast. And it very much reminded me of Untitled Goose Game uh, when I when I booted it up, not only in terms of the graphical style, but in terms of how it works. So you play the role of a little black cat who lives in a high rise apartment with its owners and falls from its favorite napping spot and lands in the city below miraculously unharmed as cats always land on their feet, as we're told. And then you set out exploring this kind of open world sandbox city and you meet different animal companions on the way and you have to do little quests and stuff, whether it's pouncing on birds and then letting them go. And as a result, you get a feather, which then this raccoon needs to collect to power his teleportation machine. Yeah, take it with a pinch of salt. It's great though. Um, there's all sorts of There's all sorts of different quests that you can do. And there's also you can unlock a photo mode as well. So the main aim is to get back up to the to the apartment. But to do that, you've got to learn the ability to climb these vines. And to do that, you've got to catch these fish. Um, And there's different ways to get them. And every time you get one and eat it, you increase your stamina. And, And that's that's the main kind of quest. But there's all sorts of different things to to find as you go. And it's just really charming. It's adorable. It's very relaxing. It's you know only five or six hours if you want to collect everything as well. But it's just there's just something about it. It's you can't not like it. And for me as well, you know you can you're not as horrible as the goose in Untitled Goose Game. You go around actually helping people. But some of the uh, city uh, residents will come up to you and take a picture of you. Some will want to stroke you. Some will be scared of you. Um, you get there's enough variety and just little moments that pop up that you think oh that's a great attention to detail so i i really enjoyed it um and i would recommend anybody to go and give it a look because it's utterly charming um and i gave it a four out of five because it is quite short um it's really really good while it lasts and the climbing mechanics can be a little bit fiddly because essentially you can jump from different platforms you hold down a and then you line up there's like a, a ghost kind of projection of where you'll land um, and you can line it up. Uh, sometimes it, it, it's a bit fiddly, but otherwise really, really good. I'd recommend it. Mm. Um, it does. I had a little go for 10 minutes and I really enjoyed it. It's not straight. It's great. It? It's really good fun. No, it's, no, but no, it's, it's not. not. It, yeah, but it's, it's more still, entitled Goose Game. With yeah, it's really good. I really like, you kind of, I really like the way it just throws you in there. Uh, he, we, he, like no instructions first of all it's really nice good uh, on game pass at the moment paul what's your um what's your game you want to chat about today my game is called arc runner now i don't know if you boys remember sort of a few years ago it seemed like zombies were the flavor of the month almost every game that was released had to feature a zombie in it somewhere well 
I think that this month's flavour of the month, if you like, is cyberpunk. There seems to be a lot of games coming out recently that are cyberpunk influenced. They've got the look. Um, and Ark Runner is another one of those. It's all dark neon and shiny and cyberpunky and all sorts. But at its core, <clears throat> excuse me, what it is, is a roguelike game. Um, basically, you have to start a run, run around, uh, kill some enemies, pick up weapons that they drop, use these weapons to then kill further enemies. And then when you die, as you inevitably will, you start the next run being able to enhance your abilities and making you a bit better. So then you last a little bit longer. Um, it's basically a, a third person shooter, um, but you have a melee weapon as well. And it's OK. There's it's very middle of the road. There's nothing bad about it, but there's nothing that makes you go, ooh, that's new. Um, so, yeah, pretty much if you fancy a cyberpunk shooter, give Ark Runner a look. I think the review is live on the site as we speak. Okay, what did you give it, Paul, again? I feel like I gave it either a three and a half or a four. Okay. It's a shame yeah. on the 200th you did on a 4.5. Uh, well, I, I I don't like to be predictable. No, it's true. That's very true. So, uh, yeah, it's true. <laughs> You're lucky I spoke about a game. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky you did anything. It's good. <laughs> um, Richard. <How> rude. <laughs> Richard, what's your game? Uh, mine is Cyber Citizen Shockman 3. <laughs> Somehow, I've reviewed all three of these games. They're a little um, early 90s. 2D side scrollers that have been ported over by our our friends at Rattalika, so you instantly know it's full of easy gamer score. Um, the, the they're an interesting trilogy. Like the first one had this really innovative idea for I think it was ninety one that it came out. Um, it had like a world map, um, and you you go to different levels by clicking on the, the specific building on this world map, but you would need certain objects from other levels to be able to go do um, other levels in on the world map. Um, so I was really excited by this prospect, and, and I would hope it would continue throughout the trilogy. The second one got rid of it, um, but the second one then had a competition in Japan when it launched for people to design some of the bosses. So the, some of the bosses in the second game hmm. are absolutely nuts. There's some really like weird and wacky designs there. Um, and then the third one doesn't have anything like that. And it's just become, it sort of started off as quite an innovative side 2D side scroller. And the, by the third game, it's just devoid of any, um, any personality. It's just quite, a, it's just the most generic 2D side scroller I've played. There's only seven levels, um, and I think I completed it first time in about 40 minutes. Wow. Um, I did have the cheats on though, because um, with it being this this 2D port, they've also put like this hub system over it, so you can go into the menus as the debug menu, there's cheats and that, um, and then you can choose whether to play like the English translated version or the original Japanese version. Um, but the, the cheats just make it um, playable, basically, because without them, uh, the amount of enemies that are on screen and then some of these really difficult platforming sections that are not even fun to play because they're just that tricky. Um, so I had to put the cheats on to, to get through it. Um, but it, it's just it's just lost all its personality. And by the third game, I was very, very disappointed. Oh, oh dear. What do you give it, Richard? Uh, a one and a half. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, I'm disappointed that you couldn't come up with a better game for the 200th episode, don't I? Well, well it's, it's, it's a good game for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. Well, there you go. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk about a game that might link us into our main news story. This is um, Corpo Nation, the sorting process. And Corporate Nation, the sorting process came out on Tuesday. And it's a 
strange kind of games. Well, it's not a strange game at all. You're you're a worker. You're instantly thrown in a worker for a, like um, a a corporation or a corporation, and you you get instructions straight away on your first day, and you basically got to you get these shapes, different type of shapes. Um, and the first time you get shapes, they're like little atom shapes with four bits in it or three or two, and you put them in different tubes according to where they go. That's what you're doing. So you're doing that for the day, and then you'll get some credits, and then you'll get a score at the end and go, well done. And then you go back to your apartment, <laughs> in your little hub apartment, and then you can, um, with your credits, you go onto the computer, and then you can um, pay your bills, or you can... Um, you can do a survey to get a bit more credits, or you can do some state-sponsored um, gaming, which is like a little Street Fighter game, and you can buy more. You can use your credits to upgrade, um, and you can speak to online other workers as well. And they say, "Oh, what a this, what a mate! I'm really enjoying the game at the moment. I'm really enjoying myself." Then you go to work the next day, and the same thing. And then they start to have different patterns. It gets a little bit harder, but it's you know it's fine. Then there's sort of like more stranger messages in the news bulletins. Things are like fake news. Then the, some of the people start to question why they're doing stuff and then you never hear from them again. So it, it, as the game goes on, you it becomes a statement. It becomes like a George Orwell 1984 um, piece, um, like the, the novel, which is kind of this whole idea of this kind of workers in this totalitarian state who, who are being looked over all the time, but they're always um, being told um, everything is good, you're being looked after, everything is fine, everything is safe. But underneath there's a kind of darkness. Why are you putting these things in these tubes? Um, you can't question that. And also it's a kind of comment, it's a great comment about not only kind of capitalism and those kind of states of that and about where you're going, but also it's a quite a good little comment about um, live, um, live service gaming, you know. Um, paying credits to upgrades and stuff because you actually do it and I couldn't stop myself being a really good worker I, I was like the worst person I was hating myself because I really wanted my credits and I paid my bills on time and I was upgrading using my thing getting into the game in but the whole point of the thing was to kind of question and then you get something from a, a kind of like a revolutionary group who send you something a secret um, password that, that throws it all up in the air but count, how do you know that they're, they're telling the truth and it's not a test? It's really good. It's a very good game. Um, really clever. It has those kind of like iOS early graphics, like iOS Mac early graphics, sort of like early 90s. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Very good. If you like something a bit different. A bit like Papers, Please. If you like that, I think you might like this. Oh, good. Are you, are you, are you sure that was a game and not just your actual life my life yeah could be <laughs> yeah just going to work getting the credits spending it on gaming and so oh, yeah on. it's true yeah i mean that's the thing it does it's very it does make you question everything um good there we go this leads us nicely on to our news item which is our main kind of big talking point today so this week the news kind of like xbox on a little bit of a precipice at the moment um it's they had to do their shutting down um, Bethesda Studios, they're going to consolidate and put them together. People did Redfall, um, and of course, I think they, the studio did Redfall before Arkane Austin. They did the Dishonored series, didn't they? Did they yeah. do that? Yeah, they were, they were part of it. Part yeah. of it. And um, the studio that did Hi Fi Rush, the award winning Hi Fi Rush, has also been um, um, dissolved as well. And they're going to put all their resources into. Consider they into kind of one kind of um, group of companies for Bethesda. So this hasn't gone down very well, has it? Um, I'm going to go around to each of you and, and say what you think first of all. Darren, what's your thoughts about this? Hold on tight. Uh, <laughs> well, I when I heard this news, it kind of made me kind of reflect on the last few months. And I remember Neil was on a podcast a few months ago and we were talking around the whole state of the industry and how many job losses we'd seen so far in 2024 and the floodgate seemed to be open and, and this, that and the other. Um, and there is an element of inevitability in terms of when Microsoft and Xbox go around hoovering up all these studios, if you have two people doing the same job, then you're probably not going to need two people to continue doing that job. However, 
I wasn't expecting something on the scale of this. And I've sat on this podcast many times and said, I don't think it's the end of the world. It seems to be in line with the overall strategy in terms of what they're doing. I'm not too not too concerned like the the business update. However, this is the first time probably since like 2013, 2014, you know, that disastrous E3 where they were, it was like, oh, look, your Xbox is a big media platform and there was hardly any games talked about. This is the first time where I've really questioned the direction in terms of what's the plan here. Um, and of course, it's quite raw still. So there's details emerging from people who have previously worked for these studios and insiders and, and there's all sorts of information swirling around. But yeah, I... Uh, it's really bad, bad news, and I'm not quite sure how we've got here. But it, I, I think the trust in Xbox as a brand, in, in in Phil, in terms of a leader, lots of stuff has been said around. We'll give these people the freedom to develop the games and work, and we'll give them the resources. And we've had Hi-Fi Rush, which is critically acclaimed, and that studio has now been shuttered. So. I'm still kind of processing it all, but I do think it's it's really it's really bad, and it's been really badly handled as well. Um, yeah, it's it's yeah. I think that's the thing, isn't it? It's it, the kind of outrage from people has also been about you know people cancelling Game Pass memberships, and also there's been a big kind of debate then about Game Pass itself. Is Game Pass, you know, people have been saying we need to buy games again. We can't go down this road. This is what happens. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that, but it's it's there's it's brought up loads of conversations. But as you said, it's a brand. It's not good for Xbox, is it, Paul? It's really not. Um, what's probably hurt them more than anything else is the deafening silence from the top. You know, you've had an, a, a bold sort of announcement. We're shutting these guys down, and then that's it. Nobody has come out and said. Well, the reason we're having to do this is because of X, Y, and Z, or whatever. I mean, Sarah Bond has apparently come out and said something today in an interview with Bloomberg. Mm. But it's it seems like a little bit too little, too late. You know, there's been deafening silence from Phil. He's not said anything. Um, and for some of it, you can kind of see why. I mean, if you look at the reception that Redfall got, it's not a massive surprise that they might have thought, Do you know what, that wasn't great, was it? But Hi-Fi Rush was one of the best games of last year. And, you know, to shut them down without without so much as a buy you leave just seems, you know, it seems like a bit of a kick in the teeth, to be honest. Here you go, you've made this great game for us. Here's your P45, see you later. Um, yeah, it, it doesn't look good. And scrolling through uh, Twitter, as as I am wont to do, um, it says that Microsoft apparently haven't finished with uh, shutting things down and taking people's jobs away yet. And obviously, because it's on Twitter, it must be true. Yeah, I mean, I think, Richard, I'll come to you second with your thoughts. About it. I think there's, a, there's been a very interesting thing, like I think Darren alluded to it when he talked about there's lots of Xbox people have come out, ex Xbox people have come out and talked about the kind of whole process. I think there's been a lot of kind of really mm -hmm. interesting interviews we look about. And one of the big things people have been saying is that it's not Xbox when the 360 came out was 300 people were, were, were the, in the Xbox team. Yeah. And now there's 30,000, which is understandable for something that's got bigger. But it's still. They would. They, one of them was saying, but it's not Xbox anymore. It's Microsoft gaming. That's what they kind of want it to be, which we we'll talk about yeah. a bit later on with the kind of like the different strands they're going to. Is and they and there's a feeling that they said this hasn't. These decisions have come down from Microsoft rather than Xbox, um, rather than Phil Spencer, rather than think these are big decisions because of all the problems they've had with the um, with the Blizzard. Um, thing as well, the amount of money and time it's taken. And then, of course, on top of that, you've got the Xbox um, itself, the hardware sales haven't been great, and the Game Pass figures are starting to fall off. So it's like it, they're making these are these are responses to that. That's what some of the people are saying today. Richard, what do you, th what do you think? Um, I think it's, it's highlighting 
an issue ac- across the the industry that the perhaps AAA gaming is in a bit more trouble than than we, than we initially thought. Um, but at the same time, to, to to go on with what Darren said about you know they just completed this big acquisition of Activision Blizzard, and there was obviously going to be some crossover between jobs, but they did that at the start of this year. So I I was kind of expecting that to be the big redundancy thing from from Microsoft for this year. Um, and then we get this one, and obviously you look at some of the games that that these uh, that these studios have put out. Obviously, we mentioned Hi-Fi Rush, um, Redfall, which didn't didn't do as well as as it as it wanted to. But I think at the, by that same token, when uh, Xbox acquired uh, Zenimax, and obviously Arkane came under that, I think they'd come out and previously said that they were hoping that it would have that Redfall would have been shut down, um, but obviously that didn't happen. Um, they got it out there and then it tanked. Um, the, I think the the other thing that I saw the day after these, this announcement happened, um, uh, was it Matt Booty, I think, had said it, um, said that they need games like Hi-Fi Rush, those, those AAA games that perhaps don't have a development cycle of three, four years, but can be pushed out. And there's like 15, 20 hours, um, small, smaller AAA games. I think that's that's where the, the industry is perhaps struggling so much because last year was such a stellar year for AAA games. You're not going to get another year like that for a long time now. Um, and everyone's obviously working on their new projects now that, that from from that last year, uh, but because the development cycle's so long, they're not getting that income coming through until they release a new title. Um, which is why I think he said, "Look, we need we need games like Hi-Fi Rush that can be perhaps uh, produced a little bit quicker, still have that AAA badge on them if you if you want to call it that." Um, and it can be played and, and condensed in in a, in a short amount of time, but by that same token, you're then losing the studio that did Hi-Fi Rush. If you want to if you want to create more games like Hi-Fi Rush, why are you getting rid of that studio? And yes, Arkane didn't have a good game uh, with Redfall, but as we just mentioned, they had Dishonored. Uh, I really enjoyed Ghostwire Tokyo last year as well. Mm, mm, I did. Um, they certainly had. A lot of talent there. Mm. I mean, there is a, there's a, there's a kind of massive conversation I think, which is I think, which is coming up about Game Pass itself as a, as a model, and about. I mean, PlayStation are not having the best of times at the moment, but they're obviously selling a lot of consoles still, and it's, it's fine. Um, but it's, it's very interesting. Someone kind of put a debate ago with Nintendo and sort of PlayStation. You kind of know what they do. That's what they do. They do games, and they make games, and those games do incredibly well. Um, and there was a kind of conversation, and this is from an Xbox person, and said, so Xbox have gone, okay, we've got Game Pass. That's our thing. That's what makes us kind of different from the rest of us. Um, and is the future for that kind of Xbox and Microsoft, in a sense, is that the Game Pass model, they want it to be bigger than that. They want it to be the main thing. They want to sell games to PlayStation, they want to sell games to Nintendo. Is that their future? I'm just interested in that, Darren. What do you think? Is is also is uh, is not only that. Is it the which we'll talk about in a second? It's about their they're opening their own bloody what's it called little um, arcade Apple Arcade equivalent for Microsoft yeah. and things like that. Is it is it that kind of? Are they kind of going down that road? Well, if I'll be, if I can be brutally honest, if they are, that's not something that excites me about a gaming platform um, at all. So I think, I think it was interesting the Bloomberg interview that Paul referenced. If you've watched the clip with Sarah Bond, as she's talking, and I've got to be honest, it's very, very word salady in terms mm. of what she's saying. It doesn't. Mm. I don't really get much from what she's saying. It's quite meaningless, if, if I'm being honest. Mm. Above her, as it pans out, there's a, I think it's a Microsoft year-on-year earnings slide, 
and you can see like the last three or four years it's 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 up like they are you know as microsoft is is making money mm. so the, the the it's i think it's been framed as a battle for the soul of xbox and what what are they going to be what does it mean are they just going to be pressured by microsoft to return on investment come what may we'll just pivot we'll do whatever makes money we'll get rid of and shut or whatever doesn't make money are studios going to be held to this kind of bar now it's like if hellblade 2 doesn't perform what happened there's all rumors what's going to happen to ninja theory and stuff (laughs) so that's what concerns me because that's for me not what that's not what excites me about a, a, a gaming platform. That's just a, te- a hybrid technology platform. And I have I might be being harsh. I have very little interest in mobile gaming. I know it's popular and I know it's a newer iteration of gaming. And that's where the money is. And that's part of what they bought when they took Activision Blizzard. So I don't doubt. I think definitely they are they are following whether the xbox leadership is is that's their vision or it's microsoft's vision they're following the money definitely and with game pass i i believed in the strategy because i thought they would have assumed that that service is going to reach a saturation point at some point you're going to add users but surely it's going to slow down and playstation network's the same it's kind of stagnated apparently so what's the plan b and I honestly didn't think the plan B was to start culling studios that aren't meeting their expectations. Um, so, so that approach in terms of following the money, I think really worries me because I think the brand may be unrecognizable from what they've been saying over the last few years around, we're about, we're about everyone gaming, we're about you know, inclusivity. And to a degree that works if you, if you launch into different platforms, but this feels like a, a symbol of if you get it wrong that's it we move on to the next thing and that worries me a little bit but that's the world we live in so they are a business at the end of the day do you paul do you think there's um do you think i think darren said it earlier do you think our whole model of how games are made and especially triple a games is there a sort of model they want these triple a games to be you know, surefire successes they're going to have. You know, we've just seen the huge success of Fallout on the on the TV mm-hmm. thing. Are they just going to go, we're just going to do Fallout, we're going to do the next Elder Scrolls, we're going to do the Indiana Jones game. Do you think oh, this might be a, will we see kind of new IPs coming up? It's, it's a tough one to call. I mean, I'm never going to say no to Fallout 5 or the next Elder Scrolls single player because um, I'm not, I don't do this Elder Scrolls Online nonsense. Um, But there's got to be a place for new IPs. There's got to be a place for people who have an idea and then make it. And then, you know, because the chances are it might flop, but it might be a a raging success. I mean, Hi-Fi Rush, I mean, I, I hate going back to this as the example all the time. But that came out of nowhere. That was shadow dropped as part of a presentation, wasn't it? Mm. And look at how that took off. Um, They've got, I mean, you were talking about games on other platforms. I was reading that um, Sea of Thieves is the most digitally downloaded game on the PlayStation 5 this month. Um, So obviously there is money to be made in that. But you can't keep churning out the same game with a slightly different number on it. I mean, I know that you fall for it every year with FIFA. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I I don't really want to be in a world where there's nothing new, where everything is safe and you've seen it before. And it's, you know, it's a new battlefield. It's a new COD. It's a new Fallout game. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, some of those things can be good. But I want to see more. I want to see, you know, Little Kitty Big City, like Darren was saying. Mm. That's not a AAA game. It's come out. It seems to be quite successful. So it's not a Microsoft game, I don't believe. But, you know, it should be an example, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. I think there's a big problem, as Richard was just talking about. I mean, it's what's, what's really interesting recently is uh, Rockstar with the gta franchise they came out didn't they and they said we've cancelled loads of games and we've got all our team and they're just working on gta 6 Mm -hmm. and in a sense that's 
kind of do what the feds were doing as well. They kind of go, yeah. and they're moving it on to go, just do Elder Scrolls, do the Starfield, and maybe do Fallout, the new Fallout game. These are our cash cows, you know, and the same with GTA. We know with that GTA 6, when it comes out next year, if it does come out next year, it will be a game that might live on for 10, another 15 years or something. So it's, and generate a lot of money. And I agree with you, Paul. I think you're right. And I think, I think, Richard, do you think it's the same? Do you think they're floundering with how we, maybe as an audience, have we changed in what, how we do stuff? As gamers, have we changed in the last 10 years, do you think? In our, um, in our appetites, yeah, yes you know, and, yeah. Yeah, yes and no. Um, I think. A lot of places four or five years ago were saying single player is dead, um, but PlayStation's first party output since then has been predominantly single player, and it's all done incredibly well. So I think there is still that appetite for a big, a big single player game to get your teeth into. Um, I think live service perhaps does sometimes work if, you, if you've got a winning formula that isn't reliant necessarily on microtransactions and grinding um but you, you sort of almost see a live service um thing as an answer to recouping money outside of the initial mm. purchase for a, mm. for a video game and i think we we as gamers some some people will will obviously buy into to all that, that DLC and outfits and cosmetic stuff. Don't get me wrong. But there's a lot that I think there's far fewer people that will. And there's something needs to be a change somewhere. And I'm obviously not the right person to come up with the idea of how these big studios are producing games, getting games out quicker because the tech, tech fallout, for an example, they announced Elder Scrolls 6 a long time ago now. Starfield has only just come out. We know that Elder Scrolls 6 is going to be four or five years away at least. Mm. And then you're going to have when, whatever Fallout 5 turns out to be. So if you're, if you're Bethesda Studios, you're going to have two, two games in 10 years. Mm. is it and that's it's not it's not sustainable and that's what i think that's what's driving a lot of this mm. yeah that live service model they can keep that get they, they can keep milking that can't they if they've got something over those years in between yeah okay um good that's enough of that i think all of it richard let's get let's have some fun let's do uh dobbo's confessional Let's do it. And here is right. here. Let me let me pause because I might be able to do this so I can remember the file is. <laughs> here is the theme music. Hopefully, I've done that. And there we go. Um, over to you, Richard. Right then, um, to to cheer things up, and I'm um, hoping that it does work. I'm going to get quite personal with this next question. So um, I want to know who is or who was your first video game crush, and depending on what answers you give, uh, I might I might be banishing people today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. oh, that that's that's an easy one. So shall I go first then? Because I've got my answer straight away. If you want, yeah, yeah. I've yeah, got one I, as well. So if you guys I, need more time, I can do it. Yeah, great. I have, I have a choice of two. Um, and it was either Lara Croft in the first game, pointy boobies and all, or it was um, Tifa from Final Fantasy VII. Okay. Uh, and I'm talking the old polygonal version as well, not the. Uh, <laughs> Not the new eye candy version. So, but yes, they were my very first gaming crushes. Wow. So um, I, I think Gareth, 
Gareth was probably Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, Richard, do you want to go do yours while we think? Yeah. Um, I had to think about this when I, when I wrote it, and I was like, obviously, Lara Croft would be the obvious choice, but I don't think I don't think she was. I don't think I got to those games a bit later. So I, I think my first video game crush was probably Alora from Spyro Two. Who, for those that don't know, she is a fawn. She's so I I perhaps. Was it a furry before a furry was even a thing? <laughs> <laughs> so l- let me get this straight. Your gaming crush was a baby deer. She wasn't a baby deer. Well, baby deer's a fawn, isn't it? She was, she was older than Spyro. Oh, right. That makes it okay, then. You yeah. furry, you. I to hope you're going to banish yourself after this one. <laughs> I I've, 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 I've come up with one. I think Paul's still getting banished because he can't make this decision between two. And also, right. Paul's isn't much better. They're both sort of really... sort of. One of them's a very small, pixelated woman. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it was the, it was the 90s. Uh, uh, you had to tell you what you could get in those uh, days. Oh, wow. Um, Darren, what have you got? I mean, I, I, I am quite worried about the direction this conversation is going to go in. <laughs> but I've never heard anybody described as a small pixelated woman before. <laughs> um, I feel like that's the song lyric. She was just a small pixelated woman. Um, but I loved her I, just the same. <laughs> I honestly don't know. I can't remember ever having a video game crush, a character, a crush on a video game character, to be honest. No. Oh, um, you're boring then. <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm struggling to be honest. I think the, the closest I probably got was um, uh, Raiden in Metal Gear Solid Two, who was like the new character yeah, um, that was like upstaging Snake. Uh, but then everyone, you started the game as Snake, and everyone thought, "Oh, great!" And then you had to play most of the game as Raiden. But I, I didn't mind him too much, so that's probably what I'd go for. Yeah, there you go. Um, right, well. When I kind of my first crush, you can't really have it in the eighties because it was just like very small, pixelated, like Mary Minor, Miss <laughs> um, Pacman. Uh, yeah, Miss Pacman could be that. Um, but I'm not as weird as Paul and Richard. But I'm going to go for <laughs> sure. <laughs> easy now. Wing Com- sure about that. I know Wing Commander Three, Heart of the Tiger. Do you remember this in ninety four? I love this game, um, and it was Wing Commander Games had Mark Hamill, so it was a full motion video, but you it was mixed with. Um, so space combat as well. So you have space combat, but also then you have these huge scenes on a spaceship, um, like Mark Hamill's there and he's kind of doing his chats. And then you, I don't think you could decide, maybe you could just, I don't think you could maybe make some choices on the conversation. I don't think you can even do that. But I think at the time I was like, and I must have been, what, 21? I was like, oh yeah, I really, I really fancy this, um, per, you know, woman. Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill. <laughs> and it was uh, it was someone called in it called Rachel Clarice. And uh, Oh was, yeah. I've got I've got the cast list up here now. And I think she's a porn actress. Yep, Martin Jillian Jones. Allen. Yes. She's an American pornographic actress yeah. and model. Which I d I didn't know at the time. Well, I do now. Uh, um so that was didn't. that's my uh that was my crush, I think. That's the only one I can think of. But I did love that game with Connor Three. Um there you go, Richard. Who's banished? Well, I feel like Darren, Darren's, Darren's is legit. I think Paul's been a bit greedy having two. Mine is weird, <laughs> I'll be honest. But, you, are, um, you are definitely weird. I'm gonna have to, I think it's going to have to be Gareth. What? For, for, for copping out by choosing a game that's got full motion video <gasps> and then picking the porn star out of the lot. Oh, wow. Yep. Oh. I didn't know she was a porn star. See? You should have gone with Mark Hamill. I didn't know she was a porn star. That's what Trump's saying at the moment. <laughs> yeah. the, on trial. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've, been, I've been loving that testimony. It's been really quite amusing watching it. Oh, God. Um, thank you, Rich. So I'm banished. Thank you, Rich. What does that mean? Uh, well, you'll be back next week. <laughs> <laughs> You have to to do uh, (laughs) 10 Hail Dobbos. Wow, 10 Hail Dobbos. I like that. Yes, that's what I'll do for next week. 
Good. Um, what are we looking forward to next week? Oh, cool. We're quite, I, was, I was wrapping it up. We've got a few minutes left. Anything anyone else want to say? What's your been your favourite moment for the 200 podcast? Let's go around. Paul, what's been your favourite moment? I, I think my standout moment, even to this day. Well, no, I'm going to be greedy and I'm going to have two again. Number oh, one here we go. is Gareth's haunted door. Mm-hmm. Whenever somebody comes in the room and it sounds like uh, something from a Scooby Doo movie, <laughs> um, and then obviously the uh, the perennial crowd pleaser that is surprisingly lengthy. Mm-hmm. Those are my favourite moments. That's good, Paul. What about You're you, uh, Dan? You're welcome. Uh, my mine's a bit of behind the scenes footage. I think I don't think it went out. So. I think one one podcast a few months ago, I think Dobbo was having mic problems and it sounded like he was possessed and we were oh, all yeah. terrified because yeah. we thought if he was. had a stroke yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Linda Blair then, on the microphone. Yeah. And then came, it was like something out of uh, The Conjuring and then came back five minutes later and all was well. Yeah. So whether he was possessed or not, we'll never know. We we'll never know. <laughs> we we'll never know. Um, what about you, Richard? Um... Probably the early days of the podcast before fall was on. <laughs> you can really go off people, you know. Uh, okay. Oh, good. I, I, I had to defend myself against James, didn't I? He was saying that I was controversial. I'm just a lovable rogue. Oh, That's all I am. Dear. Um, you are. There you go. Um, 200 of these things. Um, as you said, you can go back and have a listen. You. You don't get to cop out. We need to know what your favourite is. I can't remember. Is. I've, I've, oh, yeah. I've done them all. They're all blur to me. Um, I oh, we've had many things. We've had quizzes. We've had interviews. Oh, we've had so much actually. Um, I've enjoyed it all. Can I say that? I can't say that. Can I? I have enjoyed a lot of it. No, no there is banished again. Out. That's there, another yeah, that's there. You're out. Again. <laughs> there is one episode that we recorded and it didn't come. It didn't work. And so there's an episode there somewhere in the ether. That- that is the best episode ever. I think it was me, James, and William. I think it was, yeah. And it never just didn't record. Yeah. Only one. That's pretty good, I think. Um, good, gentlemen. What are we looking forward to next week? Uh, Darren. Uh, so I'm going to just repeat myself from last week because uh, we've not got there yet. Um, video Games Market tomorrow and then Eurovision Party tomorrow night. So oh. happy days. Mm-hmm. Good. Very good. Um, are you a vision? Do you reckon there's going to be a fight there? It's going to be a lot of controversy there with the whole Israel thing, isn't there? I, don't, I, don't, I think Israel are going to be nil point, aren't yeah. they? Nobody's yeah. going well, to be nil point. Yeah, yeah apparently she's tipped to do well. Oh, okay. Um, good. Um, what about you, Paul? What are you looking forward to next week? Um, obviously, looking for uh, samurai armor for Darren. I'm going to have to. So I try and shoehorn that in for his Shogun inspired oh, yeah. wedding. Um, Thank you. Thank you. And then what you I'm should do, like... Paul, you you should just turn up in it. <laughs> <laughs> the only I'll, one. I'll hear, I'll hear the only one around before that. Be <laughs> the door awesome. and then yeah. <laughs> It'd be the best thing to see pictures back. Who was a guy in the samurai? I don't know. Don't talk uh, about it. You'd fit right in with a bladed article in Nottingham, anyways. <laughs> though, yeah. Um, yeah, so I've got Essex on Monday, and then Tuesday I've got one of these stupid eye tests where they dilate your pupils for 300 years so you can't drive, um, which is always good fun when it's bright and sunny outside. Mm. So I'm not looking forward to that one, really. Um, but other than that, it's just work, work, work. Okay. Um, Richard, what about you? Uh, again, same as Darren, Eurovision, and as a glutton for punishment, the uh, Playoffs, love the playoffs, love being in the playoffs. <laughs> um, but then I forgot to mention when I was nearly rushed to A&E that despite all that, uh, they never got the blood. They never got it. So I'm going to have to go back at some point oh. next week. Oh, no. Maybe don't have a skin full the night before. No, no. I'm not going Sunday because I will be having a few tomorrow. <laughs> My partner, Bernadette, had the same problem. She, they can get blood from her. She's got to go back. Yeah. <laughs> 
I thought you were going to say she, she had the same problem. She was battered <laughs> last night as well. Does, does, she, need, does she need a Sherpa? <laughs> yeah. Because I, I do. Yeah, it's not good, is it? Um, I hope they try taking you out of the room before just immediately calling an ambulance again this time if, if it happens. Yeah. Again. Hopefully it doesn't. I don't think it helped that they came, they came like, oh yeah, we need to take some blood. And then they came out with, with four vials. And I was like, how much are you taking? <laughs> yeah, that's a bit scary. Yeah. Um, good, gentlemen. Thank you so much for the 200. Um, well, we'll see you very soon for the the next 200. Oh my God. Um, thank you everyone for listening. And thank you, Paul. Thank you, Richard. And thank you, Darren. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. You've been listening to the official podcast of the XboxHub.com. You'll be able to find all the notes of this show at www.thexboxhub.com slash podcast. You can also check out our social feeds on Instagram and Twitter at the Xbox Hub and search for the Xbox Hub on Facebook.